Hi, my name is Glenn Beatty, U.S. Life Master. In this video, we will examine the Carson vs. Naples game, Tata Steel Tournament Round 10. Let's have a look. The Nigel of Defense. Bishop to E2. Once again, Carson played his passive move. In the Nakamura game, Carson continued with the aggressive G4 after the bishop went to E2 and crushed Naka. Naples was definitely prepared for that line, so Carson played the F4 move. It seems that Naples had Carson's number. I really think bishop to E2 is too passive for this level of players. Watch how Naples rips into Carson's midsection. With the idea of F4, I like Bishop to F3 in this line. I think it's good for white, although black will not be without counterplay. The reason behind bishop to e3 is to control the d5 square. Let's have a look. And white soundly control the important d5 square. Let's go back to the game. This is White's challenge. He will have difficulties in protecting the E4 pawn. This move is really about fighting for control of the C4 square, not winning the B pawn because Black will win White's E pawn. Another reason White plays the A4 move is because the B5 pawn is controlling important squares in his position. Therefore, he must challenge it. This concept can be transferred to a number of openings. For example, the French. Black breaks with F6 because the E5 pawn is controlling important squares in his position. White should accept the threefold repetition and split the point, but he is Carson. Rook to e1. Instead, Rook takes a8. Black is probably better in this position. One thing for certain. It is a lot easier for him to play. White is missing his important F pawn. He need this pawn for defensive purposes of his king with a move like F3. His pass pawns on the queen side are on the original square and they serve no purpose in the game. Let's go back to the game. Carson played rook to e1 instead. Carson played g takes. Rook takes is also possible. The only thing is white pieces look uncoordinated. His back rank is soft and his rooks are not working together. The question is whether black can take advantage of these minuses before white can consolidate. What should black play? Maybe queen to d7. I'm not saying black is winning. The position is just difficult 
for the first player. Let's go back to the game. Carson capture on F3 with his pawn. Queen to D7 anyway. This move is really strong. Carson is in deep trouble. If capturing peace check check mate let's go back to the game therefore bishop to f4 Black had a forced draw with queen to f3 check, check, check. And if you step on the e file, I had rook to e8. If you play bishop to g3, I'll take the lady head off. Uh, so therefore, you basically had to play back, check, check, a forced draw. So F, but Napel knew he had a better position. So, of course, he is trying to bring home the four point. Notice how the black rook transfer from the king side to the queen side, always attacking white weaknesses. The knight had to go. It is just was it was just too strong on e4. Although this amount to resonation for white The king is without cover. This is white major problem. Black will always have threats, threats after threats. One little piggy falls. Another one. Notice how black keeps his queen centralized. Now the game is over. And black will gather up the H pawn. Carson Oatman must be in question. He was outplayed early in this game and he went down very quickly. A great game by Napole. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Good chess. Cheers.